Hello everyone. Welcome to our worship, our remote worship from Emmanuel United Church of Christ located in Ontario, New York. And welcome to any visitors who are with us today. We've been having a little bit of a computer problem, so bear with us. We'll do the best we can and we'll start with our call to worship. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of rich food filled with marrow of well-aged wines strained clear. And the Lord will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all peoples, the sheet that is spread over all nations. The Lord will swallow up death forever. It will be said on that day, Lo, this is our God. This is the Lord from whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice. And now the invocation. You prepare a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. Our opening hymn is Gather Us In, and as I said, I've been having a little trouble with our computer and phone and music, but we'll do the best we can, so I'm going to turn you, and uh, we will see what we can do. You have the verses if you have your bulletin, and we'll just try it. It's, it may be...
we come to our time of silent prayer, a time when we can just speak to God and allow God to speak to us in the silence. And now, if you have your bulletin, we'll turn to the prayer of confession together. Gracious God, you have been inviting us to your banquet in the kingdom. Of course, we accept, but there are others who have not heard your voice or the call of Jesus. Help us to invite them. May we meet them where they are and journey with them, giving hospitality and aid while respecting their gifts and the uniqueness of their being. Amen. God knows our every weakness and loves us still. God's mercy is from everlasting to everlasting. Through Jesus, we are free to love one another, to forgive one another, and to be forgiven. We are given new life. With full and free hearts, let us answer God's gift with our praise, devotion, and service. Thanks be to God. Our anthem this week is For Everyone Born, A Place at the Table. And this is a newer uh, song, and I'm hoping that our recording will come out well, so we're going to give it a try, and then I will turn you a little bit so you can hear it. No, that is not the one I want. Hang on, we'll, we'll try again. I'm not sure this is it, but we'll try. of justice and joy, compassion 
compassion and peace. Yes, God will delight when we are creators of justice. Justice and joy. Well, I don't know if that's the first time we've had a saxophone playing on our anthem, but it's interesting. Our gospel reading today is a little longer than we would normally have, but it really tells the full story of this banquet. Uh, so we'll start with uh, the first uh, verse in Luke 14 and then kind of travel through it. One Sabbath... When Jesus went to eat at the house of a prominent Pharisee, he was being carefully watched. When he noticed how the guests picked the places of honor at the table, he told them this parable. When someone invites you to a wedding feast, do not take the place of honor, for a person more distinguished than you may have been invited. If so, the host who invited both of you will come and say to you, give this person your seat. Then, humiliated, you will have to take the least important place. But when you're invited, take the lowest place, so that when your host comes, he will say to you, Friend, move up to a better place. Then you will be honored in the presence of all the other guests. For all those who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. Then Jesus said to the host, when you give a luncheon or dinner, do not invite your friends, your brothers, your sisters, your relatives, or your rich neighbors. If you do, they may invite you back, and so you will be repaid. But when you give a banquet, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, the blind, and you will be blessed. Although they cannot repay you, you will be repaid at the resurrection of the righteous. But when one of those at the table with him heard this, and he said to Jesus, Blessed is he who will eat at the feast in the kingdom of God. Jesus replied, A certain man was preparing a great banquet and invited many guests. At the time of the banquet, he sent his servant to tell those who had been invited, Come, for everything is now ready. But they all alike began to make excuses. The verse said, I have just bought a field and I must go and see it. Please excuse me. Another said, I have just bought five yoke of oxen, and I'm on my way to try them out. Please excuse me. Still another said, I just got married, so I can't come. The servant came back and reported this to the master. Then the owner of the house became angry and ordered his servant, Go out quickly into the streets and alleys of the town and bring in the poor, the crippled, the blind, and the lame. Sir, the servant said, What you have ordered has been done, but there is still room. Then the master told his servant, Go out to the roads and country lanes and compel them to come in, 
so that my house will be full. I tell you, not one of those who were first invited will get a taste of my banquet. The Gospel of the Lord. Many parables like this are hyperbolic, that is, they're over the top with intentionally exaggerated stories to catch people's attention. The wedding banquet parable is told in two Gospels, Matthew and Luke. I chose Luke today because the host is less violent than in Matthew's version. Matthew has a verse where a wedding guest is thrown out because he isn't wearing a wedding robe. I learned that in Jesus' time, wedding robes were handed out by a host, and all the guests were to graciously wear them. A guest who refused to wear one could be seen as arrogant and reluctant to fully accept the invitation of the host. Here in the parable, God is the host of the heavenly banquet. God expects us to come humbly to the table, taking whatever seat is available. Our clothing is not an issue. So again, I chose Luke's version of the wedding banquet without the clothing reference. But you know, that wedding robe, that kept bothering me. Several years ago, Tim and I planned an 80th birthday party for his mother. We booked a party room in a country club and we invited all her family and friends. But there was a problem. The club had a dress code, no jeans. In fact, no denim of any kind. Tim had a cousin who was never seen in anything but a plaid shirt and denim coveralls. How could we tell him about the dress code without hurting his feelings? We decided to have the invitations printed with a line at the bottom. There would be a little star and very fancy lettering that said something like, please note the club has a policy, no denim is allowed in the clubhouse. On the day of the party, we kept watching the entrance to the dining room. We had a supply of trousers ready in several sizes just in case, but Tim's cousin walked in wearing brand new khaki pants and a white shirt. We were so happy he came and so was Tim's mom. Tim's cousin got lots of compliments that day. Tragically, we lost him a few years ago. I know if he could be with us today, we'd all welcome him. We'd miss his hearty laugh and his classic denim coveralls. Now that birthday party was 20 years ago, but I remember it clearly, especially the waiting and the watching by the doorway for the invited guests. It was a surprise party, so Tim's mother stood with us, delighting in each guest as they appeared. Afterwards, she wondered about some who couldn't come that day. In today's parable, the host, God, sent out invitations. The first invitations went out to the Jewish people. The servant delivering them was Jesus. God stood at the doorway, watching and waiting. Had they heard the servant's message? Would they come? Most were too occupied with their own lives to bother. They made excuses. Then the invitations were extended to the poor, the crippled, the blind, and the lame, the ritually uncleaned, the shunned people, on the fringes of life, all the people that the Jewish leaders had ignored. The people on the fringes heard the servant, Jesus, calling in God's name. And those people on the fringes came in. But there was still room, and the servant was sent out to the country lanes and beyond, out to the Gentiles, so that the banquet house would be full. Now this was a simple parable for the Pharisees to hear and understand. And we're not in that original audience of this parable. We're not Pharisees. We understand what Jesus was talking about and we've heard God's invitation. We as modern Christians say we're ready to put on the robes of righteousness and enter the kingdom of God. We heard the invitation and you don't have to call us twice. We're ready for the banquet. The thing is, the banquet is the kingdom of God and the kingdom of God is both now and yet to come. We can't just line up with our empty plates at the buffet, taking the head of the line and ignoring those who are still in the streets. So there must be another lesson here for us. Perhaps as modern disciples, we should be issuing invitations to the others. But what kind of invitations? How do we invite people to the banquet? 
Is our goal focused on getting new church members? Or is our mission better focused on gathering guests to the table of God? Where do we start? Jesus tells us to begin in humility and hospitality. We begin with very small steps. We may begin by literally providing for a food banquet and a dining hall. We bring food to our pantries and we serve in various outreaches for the needy. Over time though, we need to look even further out. In the parable, through many translations, the master tells his servant to go out to the roads and country lanes, the highways and hedgerows, streets and alleyways, and urge people to come. This isn't about coming into a church building. This is about coming into the fullness of the kingdom where everyone has a seat at the table and an equal chance to become all that God has imagined for humankind. We have to examine our own lives and admit that in a lot of situations we have claimed the best seats, the upfront seats, the first positions in the buffet line. This week, a call went out from the Greater Rochester Community of Churches. They're hosting a virtual banquet on October 21st. It's called A Place at the Table, Abundance Shared. Anyone and everyone is invited to make an individual voice recording of a song called For Everyone Born, A Place at the Table. A recording has been provided to sing along, record your voice, and then send it in by October 16th. All the voices will be blended and played for the banquet. I have a copy of the tune and the words and I'll send it out to anyone who wants to be part of this. My voice isn't up for it, but my heart is. I'll be an active listener. In a way, we can all take part if we listen to the words. They ask us to provide banquet seats for everyone and especially for the people at the fringes, the very people Jesus is seeking the people who have been in the hedgerows of life. The song asks a place for each person with clean water and food and a shelter that's safe. And we can all agree on that, but in the later verses, it asks us for more. It asks for a place for the just and the unjust. It asks us to forgive. It asks for a sharing of power. It asks us to speak up and speak out. It asks us for a mindset of mercy. The song asks us to be co-creators of mercy and justice with our God. You may have realized that we've heard this song already. It was today's anthem. So you might want to go back and listen again. The Greater Rochester Community of Churches is off to the west of our Ontario church. And the issues we read about there in Rochester seem distant to us. We'd like to think that they are over that county line and we needn't bother ourselves with their Black Lives Matter or their homeless shelters or their education disparity or their economic hardships. We could say, let them work it out or let them do a little of the hard work or let them have their little songs about social justice. Well, hard times or illness can happen anywhere, anytime, to anyone. We may have some pretty good seats at the kingdom's banquet, but within our reading, Jesus gives us fair warning. He says, when you are invited, take the lowest place so that when the host comes, you can be called forward because for those who exalt themselves will be humbled and those who humble themselves will be exalted. Jesus is calling and God is at the banquet door, watching and waiting. If we answer the invitation, if we share what we have, if we seek the lost, if we take the lesser seats, we will be offered those robes of righteousness and the joy of the kingdom will be ours today and forever. Amen. Well, we know our, our theme has been this wonderful invitation of God. Let's uh, sing together uh, a hymn, Softly and Tenderly. And we're going to be singing verses 1, 3, and 4, I think. So I'm going to turn you over here, and we'll sing a hymn that's a little bit more familiar for us. 
We can get that for you. I can get it, just hang on for a minute. Something, there we go. It's such a beautiful old hymn. So now we'll just take a moment and look at our bulletin if you have it, just to remind you that we have birthdays and a special birthday today to Cindy and many others who have birthdays and anniversaries coming up. Always we look at those who are in need of our prayers for healing or those in sorrow and those we think of that are at home. Uh, a special uh, prayer I would request for a family friend, Lucy, who is now in hospice. We have some events coming up. Uh, some are specific for a few uh, officers and such, and some are for all of us. We have a special deacons meeting that we're going to make a recording on October 14th. We have the ladies' lunch. We're hoping for it at Casey Park. We hope that it's uh, warm enough for us, or if we bundle up a little bit for that lunch on the 17th. Council meets on the 19th, and um, coming fast will be All Saints Day, which is that first Sunday in November, and normally we would 
collect names to be read and we're going to do things a little differently this year we're still going to collect those names and have them on little candles so if you have memorial names we need to have those um by october 25th so please email those to me and we'll get them done for you um i have put in a call to uh, wayne central to see what they need as far as our backpack supplies so um I should get a reply next week and then we'll see what we need to do about uh, our backpacks and we can resume that. Let's take a moment now together in prayer. We come to you, Lord, every Sunday seeking healing, seeking guidance, and asking you to be with us and all your children as we work together to do your will. Even as we petition you, we also thank you for the fellowship we share and the hope we have in your mighty presence. We trust you and love you and remember you as we make the prayer you gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Well, I'm going to turn you as we have our benediction and our closing hymn. May you grow in grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To him be the glory both now and to the day of eternity. Amen. And our closing hymn is, The King of Love, My Shepherd Is. Amen.